Hey, I've got another interview style problem for you. This was actually shared with me from one of my students. It's a pretty cool problem. We've got a 3x5 chocolate bar like so, and we've got two players, player A and player B, and they're going to take it in turns one by one, snapping this chocolate bar down either one of these vertical lines or one of these horizontal lines like so. And they're going to go back and forth, starting with player A, and they ha when they make a snap, it has to go all the way through, so they can't kind of snap off a corner or anything like that that's not allowed and they're going to snap that let's say this piece and they'll take this piece and then they win that for themselves hooray but you can see that there is a red square in the middle this is a poisonous square and of course you don't want to have the poisonous piece of chocolate so you don't want to be the person who snaps the chocolate bar to take that so the question is if player a and b if a player a starts and they go back and forth who has the winning strategy and what would that be uh, to win this game. So this is a very very nice interview for me. I encourage you to pause this uh, video and have a go at this yourself. But the interesting thing to note is that this wouldn't be the only problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this and try and uh, um, maybe ad address my solution as if I was a student. But then also talk about perhaps some nice follow up questions as well. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so this is an interesting question. Now, just to clarify, I've understood this problem correctly. They're going to snap the, the chocolate bar one by one, and on each turn, they can only slap, snap the bar once. And when they snap, as you said, it has to go all the way through like so. And then the piece that they take off, that piece then becomes irrelevant to the game. Would I be correct in saying that? Interviewer would then say, yep, that, that's absolutely right. Okay, wonderful. So there's a few things that I'm thinking about here. So firstly, I could just play around with this and just see what happens if player A does a move, then B, then A, then B, and A, and then so on, and see just from this, this scenario here who would win. I guess another thought I've had here is we could just look at a smaller grid first. 3x5 is not too big, but this would obviously be easier if this was like a 2x2 two two grid or something. And the other thing that perhaps I'm thinking about in this case is there's a lot of symmetry here because obviously our poisonous square is right in the middle so there's a line of symmetry here but also a line of symmetry here as well so i'm thinking if that could be useful especially given that there's two pairs this is actually reminding me of another problem where the the kind of aim of the game is to place pepperonis on a pizza and the last person who can't or the first person who can't place another piece of pepperoni on the pizza loses and in that game the pepperonis can't overlap but anyway the reason i'm bringing that up is because the strategy for that game was to exploit the symmetry of a circle and i'm thinking of something similar here and in that problem the second player kind of just matched what the first player did so i think that could be useful here so i think player b would always win because of the symmetry here so again provided they play optimally so it doesn't really matter what a does if A, let's say, decides to cut here, the idea is B will just do the symmetric counterpart to that move. So here, that's a vertical line. So if I reflect that vertical line down this line of symmetry here, B is then going to cut down here. And the idea here is the invariant is the fact that the grid after B's turn will always be symmetric. And so therefore, it should um, never be possible for B to lose. So let me just quickly summarize that. B is just going to do the symmetric counterpart of whatever A will do. And in doing so, once B has done their move, the grid will remain symmetric. Because what A does, B is going to copy on the other side. The, the grid will remain symmetric. And then eventually, A will, let's say, let's say we've got down to this kind of rectangle here. A will, let's say, cut there. And B is going to cut there to leave the remaining grid symmetrical. Obviously, it's just the one poisonous piece. And then A has to take that and lose. But let me just maybe, just to also convince you one, one, one bit more, just give you another scenario. So if let's say A decides to cut down here, or let's say A decides to do a horizontal cut there, then B is going to do the same kind of corresponding horizontal cut there. So now we're left with just this bit, bit of chocolate. And so let's say if A decides to cut down that line there, then B is going to reflect that line over and cut there. If A then cuts there, B will cut there, and A will then be forced to take that poisonous piece of chocolate. So this is the technique that B can use to always win. And I notice that this will there's nothing really too special about the 3x5 grid. 
um, as long as there is a central piece and the graph has symmetry both in the uh, like uh, horizontal symmetry and vertical symmetry, we should always be able to do this. So I think this would be we could use this argument in any odd by odd chocolate bar as well. And there we go. That is a very strong response to this question. As I say, this wouldn't be the whole, or you know, depending on how quickly you got to the answer here, this wouldn't necessarily be the whole interview problem. I mentioned this before, but it's worth mentioning just in general with interview problems is they'll have lots of potential follow-up problems as well because different people will take different amounts of time to solve the problem and you know maybe you don't even finish the first part, that's absolutely fine. Maybe you do finish the first part, you move on to the second part, move on to the third, move on to the fourth. They'll always have follow-up things ready for you. Now, what I think is also useful to do in your final few days of preparation is when you are doing problems, have a think about how you could extend them on more particularly how could the interviewer extend them what potential follow-up problems could they ask so for example in this case we've got an odd by odd or we've kind of dealt with the odd by odd case what about odd by even who has the winning strategy then what about even by even and you'll find that that's actually a very interesting question or oh, i think it's an interesting question so i encourage you to explore that maybe here we could have two poisonous squares as well uh, that's another way to extend this. So what if we had two poisonous squares? We moved the location of the poisonous square. So it wasn't in the middle anymore. It was maybe in the corner or on the side or in somewhere else. So there's lots and lots of ways that we could uh, generalize this. I encourage you to play around with it. Anyway, we'll finish there for today. If you haven't got your interviews in the next couple of days, best of luck. I know Oxford are doing a lot of theirs next week. So best of luck if you've got that. And if you've already done yours, sit back, relax, and have a lovely <laughs> festive season. Take care.